my name is Pam and welcome back to another video. Hey, I thought we would talk about some common hamster mistakes that I think all of us have made in the past. Hey, you know, it is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of if um, this is something you have done in the past or if it's something that you are doing right now at the moment. And the main thing is learning from our mistakes and taking action. That's really about any pet in general. We really wanna give our pets the best and long lasting healthy life uh, possible. I thought I would go ahead and share some of those mistakes. Even when I was younger and that is way back in the day, I only remember AOL Messenger and MSN Messenger, so there wasn't many like resources for us back way back then. Don't feel ashamed. Okay, so number one, don't ever want to forcefully wake up your hamster during the day. And this is something that I have also learned from. Really not fair to the hamster just to, you know, go in there and hey, wake up, it's time to play. Hamsters are nocturnal, so their bedtime is when we wake up for the day. For a second, imagine you're sleeping and it's around three or four in the morning and all of a sudden you're woken up by this big hand coming at you, picking you up and taking you out of your bed and going to play right now. That is basically what the hamster feels when we forcefully wake them up. Obviously, if it is an emergency and you need to take your hamster to the vet, that is a completely different story. That is something um, that we are responsible for. And many of us sometimes do not have time to, you know, clean the hamster cage at night uh, when they're awake at like two in the morning because each hamster is different and some might wake up really, really late. Some will wake up at 9 p.m. It is always different. The majority of the time they wake up pretty late. For example me, I usually clean my cages during the day. But instead of force waking them up, I will actually just start kind of cleaning up cage and they will actually come out by themselves and it won't be as stressful for them because they are waking up themselves. Trust me, you're gonna feel like a better pet owner if you don't forcefully wake them up just to take them out and play with them during the day. Number two, really wanna make sure that your hamster has a decent size cage and the recommended minimum size cage. Cannot stress enough how important it is to provide a decent size space home for your hamster. Any videos out there showing you like the worst cages online, I will leave some of those links down below. Of course, hamster care has progressed throughout the years and the minimum cage size is 450 square inches and all you have to do to figure that out is measure the length times the width and you will get your square feet square inches not feet that would be crazy it's amazing though myself had made that mistake when I was about 11 or 12 years old it was my first hamster and I do remember her being in a little critter trail type cage and yeah they've had critter trails for a very long time. I mean, this is many, many, many years ago. Back in the 1990s, already had critter trails. So you know, I totally understand like some cages are so expensive and it can be probably really difficult to get your parents to like upgrade your hamster into like a new um, expensive 40 gallon breeder tank, something like that. Remember there are bin cages. I had made a bin cage or a DIY bin cage video a very, very long time ago. I think like, around two years ago. Many tutorials on YouTube as well. So easy to make a bin cage. Like this one right here, I love these cages so much. I really wasn't able to afford like the cages that I do have. I definitely would be going back to my DIY bin cages. Many, many options to provide your hamster with um, a, dis a, dis a decent, a decent size cage. Number three, now this is something I personally have never experienced myself, um, but when you go online, you do kind of see like a lot of people doing this to this day and um, I don't really understand why. Some people are housing like three or four hamsters in one cage. Definitely do not recommend doing that at all. Commonly, you can house two dwarf hamsters or two robo hamsters together in one cage if they get along. Guys, remember Patch's story, he was housed with another dwarf hamster and they fought 
and that's why he has like a huge injury on his eye. Of course now totally better since they've been separated. Unless two of your dwarf hamsters get along, you know exactly what you're doing and how to watch out for the signs if they would fight and things like that. Obviously a completely different story, but I have seen many people housing like three or four hamsters together and I really, really do not recommend that. Remember Syrian hamsters are complete solitary hamsters. There's a huge difference between Syrian hamsters and dwarf or robo hamsters and Syrians are complete solitary. Another adult Syrian with another adult Syrian, they are going to fight until the death and that would just be a very, very terrible thing. If you are one of those people that are doing that at the moment, unless you are like breeding obviously and you're in that field, you know what you're doing, I not recommend putting three or four hamsters in one cage. It can really stress them out and can cause a lot of injury. Please don't be ashamed or anything if you are doing that. Um, I really hope that you will just take this advice. Four hamster wheels, yay! I am almost sure that many of you already know, um, you know, the correct wheels, the correct sizes, and all that jazz. First off, mesh wheels are a big no-no, and that kind of goes for the whole rodent family. The longer that they run on a mesh wheel, they will develop at some point bumblefoot, what is called bumblefoot. It really, really hurts the feet. And of course, also depending on the size of your hamster, you want to make sure that you get the correct size wheel. For Syrian hamsters, I personally like to stay around the 8.5 inch and above. Personally, I never really ever had a problem with the 8.5 inch wheel for a Syrian. It depends on how big your hamster actually is. As there were many times where I did have to upgrade from the 8.5 inch to a 11 or 12 inch wheel. And the same thing applies for robo and dwarf hamsters as well moment for patch I'm actually using a eight inch wheel six and a half inch wheel is also great for dwarf hamsters and number five the last thing that we are going to talk about today common mistake of coming down with your hand like a claw on top of your hamster so something I had done when I was younger um, just because I didn't know any better and of course down the road when I had learned that I obviously did not do that anymore I recommend just putting your hands underneath the hamster and scooping them up especially when you first like bring your hamster home and be starting the taming process I really do not recommend like going in like from above actually they are just gonna be really really scared of that because they're gonna think like prey is coming down and you know wanting to eat them and all that kind of stuff can really stress them out and really scare them and we really don't want that to happen. Obviously if you had your hamster for a very long time you can sometimes like slowly come from the side and pick them up which is something I tend to do as well. Definitely in the beginning I don't recommend like just going on in with your hand. Really would just stick to going underneath them and scooping them up. Well, those were just some of the common mistakes that I wanted to share with you guys and just basically things to avoid. Remember, like I said, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, you know, everyone has made a mistake at some point in their life with their pet. To other people's suggestions and experiences can really, really help you out because we really want them to live a happy and healthy life. So that is definitely the main goal. I really, really do hope that this video somewhat helped you guys out there that um, I really wanted to know some of these things. Also, I really wanted to include a shout out today for the end of this video. And this one is from AA Kawai. Kawaii. I can't say that word. I'm having difficulties. Kitty. She wrote, yay, I'm early, sort of, but I got my long-haired Syrian today. You helped me so much, Pam. I love you with all my heart. Don't change. Huge congrats to you for getting a new hamster. That is so exciting. I know it's always very, very exciting for me when I bring a new hamster home. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you down below. See you soon. Bye.